talking about entertainment. Well, the only entertainment we got was playing on the street. We were always a bunch of guys together, and uh, you did all kinds of games, kind of uh, baseball. We had the whole street for that because uh, there was no traffic anyway. In the middle of the street, at certain distances, were uh, kind of uh, manholes for the sewer. Well, those things, we made our bases for baseball. And a pitcher didn't exist. You had to throw your own ball up, and then with a stick or whatever you had handy, you just give it a bang and uh, see what happened. It cost a lot of windows, but uh, people were uh, pretty good at that, you know. Uh, you had to pay for it, of course, but it all taken care of. Other place, well, I don't know how they call that here. Hide and seek it was, yeah. Well, the hide and seek places <laughs> were abundant. Uh, the houses, you could uh, go into the doors, you came into the hallways, and you always could walk up to the fourth floor where the stories of the people were. That was kind of uh, free country. And some of those apartments were interconnected over the shoulders, or that was under the attic. It was pretty hard to find a guy, you know, if, if he found out that he was followed uh, while he moved over to the other house. So one play of hide and seek could take for a couple hours. Other things, and especially for boys, which I actually shouldn't mention, but uh, I thought it was a funny thing. If you had a couple boys together, three, four, or half a dozen, we had to came the farthest urinate on the street. But we did, we lined up on the sidewalk, opened the fence, and uh, well, you had to squirt or whatever you could do, you know, and you had all kinds of theories about uh, squeezing or, or whatever. Anyway, uh, there was always one guy who was a little bit further than I, and, and he was the daily champion. Big deal. There were no prizes, of course. Playing ball. Football, well, that was not allowed on the street. We did it anyway. But who had the ball? Well, he had a lucky guy, and uh, he had picked up a tennis ball somewhere, you know, by the rich people uh, for the uh, tennis fields. Sometimes they jumped over the fence and uh, stole some balls. So uh, there was always a guy who had the ball. But if he didn't have a ball, well, an old pile of new, old newspaper everybody had, and a piece of string were always available somewhere. So we made them ball from paper, string around it, and away we went. That was our ball. Didn't cost anything, but we had a lot of fun. When I got all that, after school, you know, uh, well, you didn't do those things anymore, and uh, I was kind of a uh, loner. I was always by myself at that time, and uh, I just went from one neighborhood to the other, just walk the street and uh, look at stores. And, uh, it passed the time, and we, we didn't do any harm. I did a lot of walking. At the weekends, I had a few uncles and aunts who were living oh, about an hour, hour and a half walk from our place. And what we did. Sometimes I went with one of my sisters and sometimes I went alone. We went on a walk along canals and went to Oma Case or Uncle Case. I was an old man, but he was a good hearted guy, you know, quiet, smoking a pipe, and he was living on the third floor and they had a parrot. And the parrot could talk a little bit, so what we did, we sat beside the parrot and talked to him a little bit. His wife, Tante Anne, a real old woman, she couldn't get along with the husband as, as far as I was concerned. We were waiting until she went to the kitchen to make a cup of tea for us, and that was the time when Oma Case pulled out his wallet. Now his wallet was just a piece of strip leather with a string around it, and he opened it up, and he always found a nickel or a dime, and he gave it to us without letting our aunt know. That dime was meant to go back with the tram, 
But they would hell if you had money in your pocket. You, you don't want to uh, come spend it on a trip and a uh, street car. So we saved our, uh, that money up and that's how we got the money. The money was spent anyway in the, in the snoop bingo or the candy store. You could get something for half a cent, for one cent, and for three cent, and for five cent. But we didn't go that high. We never spent more than one cent at a time, sometimes only a half a cent. We had half a cent at that time. There were copper mints about the size of uh, our dime. That was valuable money for us. That take care of our entertainment when we were, uh, well, in our younger years, say between 10 and 15 years old. At that time, I was working already, and uh, ah, there was the custom in our family that Whatever you made that morning, you had to lay on the table at home, and 10% of it, that was your pocket money. Now my first money was $2.50, so every day I got a quarter. Well, that took care of me that every day I could spend just about 5 cents, you know, and in the end of the week I was broke. But after that, it was better when I got a race. Uh, I was making 3.50, so I got 35 cents. So every day I could spend a nickel. You could do quite a bit and big chocolate bar for 5 cents and all kinds of candies. But we were happy and we were satisfied. We were well fed and well clothed by mom and dad. They took care of us pretty good.